Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God gives and he takes away. It's a phrase that I think almost all of us are familiar with. I mean, it comes from Scripture. It comes from Job chapter 1. But it still doesn't seem to bring much comfort. I mean, he gives things only to take them away. Why would he do that? I mean, it's like if you're walking with a kid that has a balloon, and all of a sudden they lose hold of that balloon, and it goes floating off into the air. And so they start crying. And almost every adult reacts the exact same way. Is you say, well, it's just a balloon. We'll get another one. And that always works great. No, it doesn't help at all. Because the kid's response is, I want that one. Is that how God reacts to our loss? Where he looks at whatever it is that's out of our reach. He says, it's not a big deal. We'll get another one. No, God doesn't deal with us like that. Because a wise parent whose child has lost even something simple as a balloon knows that trying to minimize the loss isn't helpful. See, because even if you think it may not be a big deal, the loss is significant. The loss is always significant to the one who is dealing with it. So trying to ignore grief, trying to minimize it, isn't actually helpful. This is why we need All Saints Day. Because instead of ignoring grief or loss, instead of comparing it, instead of minimizing it, today we take time for God to speak into it. And we especially need it this year because all of us are dealing with some kind of loss. And we're carrying that loss with us. Whether it's the loss of regular social activities, regular interactions with others cancellation of events or programs, the difficulty in relationships that you just can't invest in like you used to, the loss of income or employment, the loss of a loved one. We're all carrying some kind of loss with us. For my family, that loss is our daughter, Lydia, who died on January 29th of this year. And so I know it's not easy to carry loss, especially this year, because oftentimes it's something that we're not sure if we're ever going to put it down. We're going to carry it with us for the rest of our lives. So today, maybe you're carrying with you the loss of a loved one that has died recently, or maybe you're grieving a loss from years ago, and that's normal, because grief is not linear. It's cyclical. And as we go through the cycles of grief, we're not sure whether the cycles are taking us up or down. We just know that it still hurts. It's still hard. See, in all of these scenarios, whether the loss is something that we think is big or small, we can easily feel isolated in our grief. I mean, we're already isolated because of circumstances and restrictions. We're separated by distances often far more than just six feet. We're alone because we're missing that person who has died. And no one seems to know what to say or how to help, and so oftentimes we end up saying nothing, which makes us feel even more alone and isolated. And as the weeks go on from the loss, as the cards and the visits begin to dwindle, we begin to wonder if anyone else is grieving too. What we need isn't magic words to make things all better. What we need is to know that we're not alone in our grief. And maybe that's become more clear this year because all of us are dealing with loss. And whether we think our loss is big or small, that's not 
the issue because it's not about comparing our losses. It's about experiencing them. We're all dealing with something. So no matter your loss, whether it happened in 2020 or it happened 10 or 20 years ago, it's easy to get overwhelmed by what has been taken away. This is why we need All Saints Day. Because this day, this text from Revelation 7 give us a different perspective on the phrase he gives and takes away. Because today we're reminded that the Lord is not done giving. So I invite you to bring your loss with you. Whatever it is. Bring it with you to this text as we get a beautiful glimpse into heaven, into the great multitude of those who have gone before us in the faith. I mean, the loved ones of ours who have died in the arms of their Savior, those who we'll name later on in this service, and those who we just continually name in our hearts, they are a part of this great multitude. Your own loved ones, your child, your parent, a spouse, a friend. What we're given here is a glimpse of what God has given and taken in their lives. He has taken away their pain, their hunger, their thirst. He has given them rest. He has taken away their loneliness and isolation, and He has brought them into the full community of the saints. God takes away the stain of their sin, and He gives them the white robe of Christ's righteousness. Simply put, All Saints Day reminds us that those whom the Lord has taken away from us, He has given everything to. For these saints, God has given and taken away in the best way imaginable. And so we can say along with Job, Blessed be the name of the Lord. But God doesn't just give to these dearly departed saints. He has something for you today. He will not leave you empty-handed in your loss. He gives hope. He gives hope that your losses in this world are temporary, but the gifts that He gives are eternal. He gives you hope that the separation you have now from those people you love is not forever. That person who you're really missing right now, that loss that you carry with you each and every day, God gives you hope today that in Christ, that loss, that burden is temporary. Just as Christ has been raised from the dead, so too will all those who believe in Him. You will be given time with that loved one again. In fact, you'll be given so much more time than than was ever taken away. And so we have hope. Hope in the reunion in heaven. Hope in a God who wipes tears away from our eyes. Hope that our pain, our trouble, and our losses in this life will one day come to an end. There's tremendous hope in the knowledge that our loved ones in the faith are being sheltered in the presence of the Almighty God. That Jesus himself is their shepherd and is guiding them to springs of living water. There's tremendous hope in knowing that we will join them when we die because of what Jesus has done for us. But God has yet more to give to you today because he doesn't just give you hope for tomorrow, he gives you comfort for today. Jesus says in our gospel reading, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. It's easy for us to lose sight of this, and this is why we need All Saints Day, because it's easy to think that the loved one who has died, they receive the he gives part of the phrase, and we're left with the he takes away. But that's not how God works. He continues to give to you in the midst of of your loss. As we just sang in the hymn, Be Still My Soul, in verse 3, 
Be still my soul. Your Jesus can repay out of his own fullness all he takes away. In your grief and your loss, you are not alone. You are not left empty-handed. God is not done giving to you. It seems like some of the people that understand this the best are those who have gone through the most oppressive suffering. Because through their suffering, they've experienced a God who continues to give to them, to carry them through whatever their loss is. Annie Johnston Flint is one such person. Uh, She lived in the early 1900s, and uh, she lost her parents at a very young age. So she grew up as an orphan. And so she carried the loss of her parents with her her entire life, even after she was adopted into a a very great family. Annie also dealt dealt with uh, health issues her entire life. She had severe arthritis, and so she struggled to move or to even be able to use her hands. She suffered from cancer for many years. And she had sores covering her body, so much so that if she just wanted to rest, she needed to be cushioned by eight pillows just to be able to rest. And in the middle of all this suffering, of what could could be considered a life of loss, Annie Johnston Flint wrote these words. He giveth more grace when the burdens grow greater. He sendeth more strength when the labors increase. To added affliction, he addeth his mercy. To multiplied trials, his multiplied peace. His love has no limits. His grace has no measure. His power, no boundary known unto men. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and giveth and giveth again. See, in Jesus... You not only have the hope that your losses in this world are temporary, you have the comfort that God will carry you through them. So no matter what loss you brought in with you today, whatever it is that you've been carrying, God continues to give to you. For out of His infinite riches in Jesus, He giveth and giveth and giveth again. And it's one thing to say this in theory, and it's a nice sounding him, but I say it not in theory, but because God has shown it in my life. See, ever since Lydia died in January, there have been plenty of hard days. Probably more hard ones than easy ones. But through it all, God has not stopped giving to us. I mean, through it all, we've been surrounded by his church. Even in times of isolation, we've been covered in prayers. We were given through a comfort, through a funeral service that no one ever wants to plan. We were given the tremendous blessing of this congregation, being here at Zion for our vicarage year. Because these past few months, we've been given blessing upon blessing through you guys. See, I've come to know, I've come to experience that in the quiet moments, in the darkest nights, when the loss seems the nearest, God is nearer still. So in your life, no matter how small or big your loss, God is bigger still. And he continues to give to you today. He will continue to give to you tomorrow. He will continue to give to you. No matter what is taken in your life, God still gives. God is still with you. And so on this All Saints Day, may we fix our eyes on that day, that day that is coming, that day that is promised, where God will take away all the hurt, all the pain, all the tears in your life. May we look to that day where instead of holding on to a memory of our loved one, you will hold on to your loved one again. May we look to that day, to that great reunion of all whom God has called to himself. And as we wait for that day, hold on 
to these three promises. First, you are loved. Second, you are prayed for. And third, you are not alone. God does not leave you empty-handed. And you never have to carry your loss or your grief alone because God's church here at Zion is with you. God Himself is with you always to carry you through. And so as, as we walk through this life, as we journey through grief and loss, my prayer is that these words would become your experience, your reality, your hope. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and giveth and giveth again. In his name, amen. Now may the peace which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus until the day that he brings you home. Amen.